Speaking Human. Today on Speaking Human, we review the state of online reviews to determine whether it's fair or foul for brands to pay for positive mentions. Anonymous internet users who may or may not be on our payroll call this episode of the podcast the greatest thing to happen to your ears since sound. Speaking Human. Welcome to Speaking Human, where we simplify the world of marketing for humans. I'm Shad Conley, and you can read my two-star review of my co-host, Patrick Jever on Yelp. You're okay, Patrick, but your refusal to acknowledge Jean-Claude Van Damme's epic split as the greatest YouTube video of all time cost you some serious stars. I knew that was going to catch up with me. It came back to haunt you finally. That Yelp review is going to crush you. Ah. <sighs> well, and if you don't know already, I'm Patrick Jebber, and I'm willing to pay handsomely for one really great review of this podcast today and today only. Paying may or may not constitute monetary value and handsomely will not in any way reflect on the appearance of said reviewer, although if said reviewer is handsome and can prove it in the review, we'll acknowledge handsomeness in an online social media post. Note that handsomeness is defined as a good-looking man and can refer to a woman who is striking or imposing in good looks rather than conventionally pretty. That was some (laughs) fantastic fine print there. You really uh, dug into the meaning of handsomeness. So after that, I'm pretty sure the online reviews are going to come flooding in. Flooding. Which gets us to the topic of today's episode. We're talking about one of today's top consumer research tools, online reviews. Now, Patrick, would you call, would you consider yourself an active online reviewer? Do you leave them? Do you read them? What's the deal? I'd say I leave pretty seldom, actually. I leave reviews, but I read reviews Most of the time, I know what I'm looking for in a product online, but when I don't, I do a search and I look through the specs or the details first, and then I always go to the reviews and scan them. I feel like if you're conscious of the overly critical and insanely positive reviews and really just look at the trend, you know, if you're just scanning them, usually you can get a pretty good idea of how the product or the business performs. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're pretty much on the same page with that. That's my process. You know, I think of recently I was buying like a dishwasher. So I was looking at all these different dishwashers, which are different, but more or less exactly the same, you know, scanning through the reviews because you get that like aggregate star review, but it doesn't mean too much. You know, you got to just scan these and look for patterns, you know. If mm-hmm. people are talking about like a problem over and over again, you're seeing it pop up in different reviews. You know, that's something that would stand out to me. But I definitely look at them. I definitely use them. I don't leave them as much, though. You know, I don't leave them very much. I get emails all the time being like, what'd you think of? And I'm like, man, eh, delete. I'm not a huge reviewer myself unless it's an exceptional experience one way or the other. And I think that's the way a lot of regular folks like us are. Yeah, yeah. I don't leave them as much as I look at them, I guess. Yeah. If someone's like, hey, I'll give you a $5 gift card for leaving a review, you would do it? Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely do it. I mean, if it was 50, it'd be better. (laughs) (laughs) You got to pay me handsomely for my review. Yeah, that was an evil, maniacal laugh. So you can be bought. Good to know. (laughs) Now, what do you think about, you know, we've talked about our own perspective on it. What do you think the overall influence of online reviews are? Do you think they have a big impact on people's like purchasing decisions or whether they choose to work with a company? Yeah, I do. I think online reviews are very influential. You know, a statistic on search engine land says that 88% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations, which says a lot, you know, because a lot of times your friends have the same sort of perspectives on life and products and brands and stuff most of the time I would say so if you're looking at reviews online of people who you don't know and you look at how that relates to personal recommendations I think that's a pretty big statement yeah I agree what's interesting about that 88% stat I think it's crazy I don't know the validity of it but I was like man 88% trust an online review as much as like me talking to you and you giving me a recommendation that seems crazy to me and that's maybe what's different. I think a lot of people look to online reviews like I said I do. You know what I mean? I think they go and they check them out. I think a lot of people use them as a tool. I'm surprised to know that many people would actually trust them. I wouldn't say I have an innate distrust of online reviews but I'm skeptical of a lot of them I guess. 
Yeah, and I think that's probably why I say that a lot of people don't even, they're not even aware that there are paid reviews out there, you know? I mean, most just regular internet users don't think that way, you know? I mean, in general. Yeah, and it goes even, you know, to anything. That's like someone can see a tweet that like a celebrity died and it can be completely false, but they'll just immediately believe it because they're not expecting fake information, right? Yeah. For whatever reason, we know it's out there, but we're not expecting it. That's so true. That's so true. It's the weird way the world works. So before we dive deeper into our discussion of online review, Shad, let's take a quick moment to get a word from our sponsor. Sounds great. Today's episode of Speaking Human is sponsored by none other than Monsters Unlimited, a creative agency with a business brain. When you want to grow a reputable brand that can attain positive reviews on Yelp and social media, think Monsters. Visit thinkmonsters.com for more information. Basically, this happened. PewDiePie and other YouTubers took money from Warner Brothers for positive game reviews. <sighs> I, I'm just disappointed. This is all over my Twitter feed. People are saying PewDiePie took corporate money to not disclose paid game reviews. Hashtag shame. Warner Brothers and PewDiePie's shady influencer marketing. So, it's shady. It's disgusting. Bloggers and influencers have responsibility to disclose. So now that PewDiePie got caught getting paid off by publishers to shill for games, can we hate him now? Can we just hate PewDiePie now? I don't really know what he does, but I never liked him and ooh, now I got a reason to hate that son of a bitch. He got paid and he didn't disclose it. That was a clip from a video by the YouTuber known as PewDiePie, who made news recently for accusations he and other influencers took money from Warner Brothers to positively cover one of its video games without adequately disclosing it. So Patrick, this is a little bit of what we're talking about, what people are unaware of, that these kind of things take place. You know, thinking about that specific situation, what do you think about that? Is that controversial or is that just kind of an everyday thing? And is it okay for Warner Brothers to pay YouTubers to talk positively about their products? I think it's okay. I think it's okay to pay for reviews. You know, I don't know if it's ethical to pay for a positive review, but I think if you're just paying someone and said, hey, you know, review it, inevitably, I guess whether or not the person is then going to positively review it because they feel the need to positively review it because you paid them, I guess that's where you get into the gray area of paid reviews, right? But I think if there is an understanding that, hey, you know, we just want you to review this, you know, and hopefully the quality of the product shows through and that you enjoy it because of that. And we're paying you really for your audience and not necessarily for, you know, the fact that we want you to just say nice things about it. I think it's generally OK, as long as you're disclosing it that, hey, this is a paid review, because I think that's important for people to know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. But do you think it's adequate? You know, like in this situation, it was... Just a, a footnote, a link in the bottom of the YouTube video. Do you think it needs to be stated in the video itself? Or do you think just putting it, you know, with the text that goes with a video is enough? I think probably putting it in the video would have been better. It's one of those things. I feel like you could go super overboard with everything in life. You know what I mean? It's sort of our job as consumers, as the people who are researching it, to do our due diligence and look for those things. As long as it's not hidden, it's not buried, I think that, you know, I could find that out. You know, I could see, oh, this is a paid review. And sometimes paid reviews are really obvious just in the video itself, the way that the review is written or it's spoken or, you know. Yeah, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of dancing around a lot of fine lines here. And where you kind of place your line, I think, varies greatly from person to person and definitely from brand to brand. You know, there's even the line of what is a review. PewDiePie has said in his rebuttal video, he's like, I don't do reviews. It wasn't a review. I was just talking about something. He played the game and he was saying whether or not he liked it. I mean, that's what he does, you know? Yeah, he doesn't consider himself a reviewer and he's probably not. Let's kind of take a minute and see if we can define these lines. Would you say it's okay for brands to, say, send an email and ask people to leave reviews of what they thought of a product they bought? Is that okay? 
Yeah, I do. I mean, it's the same thing as if you're a business professional and you just provide a service and you're asking for someone to leave you a reference. I mean, you're hopefully going to get more positive ones. I mean, if you have a quality service or product, I think that should stand on its own. Yeah, you know, I agree with you there. To solicit reviews is good. We, we talked about the power that online reviews have and how they're used by people so frequently as a tool, as a research tool. You want those out there. You definitely want to get them there. So I think that's okay too. Let's, you know, real quickly go through a few other things and see if we can find where a line is, if there is a line. So mm -hmm. what if you, you know, reach out to people and say, here, I want to give you this product, leave a review, positive or negative. Does that seem okay with you? I think that that's okay. I think that inevitably affects your review. Yeah, it definitely does. Unless they're doing something shady, I think most of the time those kinds of reviews state the fact that they received a demo model of this product to try out or whatever. But I think that makes a huge difference because you tend to, if somebody gives you something, you tend to have a positive reaction to that, you know? You lose the stakes of having invested your own money into it, right? Yeah. You know, as if someone just hands it to you and you're like, ah, oh, this is okay. It's a much better experience than when you pay a hundred bucks for it and you're like, ah, oh, this is okay. Which, you know, obviously then skews more towards the negative just based on what you had to put into it. So I think we're on the same page there. I think that's actually a savvy brand move and it's a good way, you know, depending on your product to get to generate some positive buzz. So then, you know, taking that to the next step, do you think it's all right to pay for positive reviews? Like specifically state, here I'm going to give you this amount of money for you to leave a positive review online. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> you know, if you're paying for a positive review, I feel like you're just trying to scam the system. The system is meant to give people an accurate representation of what your product is. And if you're paying for somebody to positively review it, what's the difference of you just writing content and saying nice things about your product and paying someone to actually just submit it? I mean, that's essentially what you're doing, right? Yeah. Here's, I guess, another side question to it. And this is another thing brands do. Let's say you're a company that produces a certain kind of technology and you say, all right, well, we're going to sponsor this technology website that'll talk about all different things in the news, not just our products, but then they're, you know, constantly leaving positive reviews of your products. Do you think that's ethically murky or is that okay? Because a lot of brands, that's something else a lot of brands do. I want real. And I think that's what everybody wants. You know, you know they don't want reviews that are manufactured. Or fake, right? Mm -hmm. You hit it when you said real. You want there to be an authenticity to this giant system we have set up online. And you can, you know, you can tweak and nudge that a little bit as a brand. But I think when you start to manufacture it or people working for you leave positive reviews on site, you know, because they're told to do so, you just lose that authenticity and that honesty that's so important online for brands today. You know, I don't know if there's an exact line in the sand anywhere, but I think it comes when you lose authenticity. You know, what we talked about, giving people free products is the best way to push your influence without actually influencing, without slamming your fist down and being like, it will be positive. That's the best way to do it. And that to me is the best space to be before you cross that line. Yeah. And I think probably one of the most important things I can say about reviews and something that I just think people need to understand in general, all reviews are just opinions. If you're looking at purchasing the product and you relied on only one review and no other sources of information, that's really not a great way to make a decision. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you understand this, I feel like, and logically scan those reviews like we were talking about, it makes things much clearer and you can make a better sound buying decision. You know what I mean? Especially because of the fact that some people online, I know this is going to be shocking, are just trying to be funny or be crazy. Or are crazy, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you look at Amazon reviews, you'll ever, every once in a while find one of these nuggets. There's even a whole like Tumblr site devoted to just weird Amazon reviews, which I was trying to look up some things for, and I found a few, but there's just all sorts of crazy or funny reviews that people are just putting up there for whether it's authentic and they're really having these thoughts or they're just trying to get a good laugh, they yeah. still count towards, you know, how many stars it's getting. They're still posted up there for people to see. But I know one of them, like for the Jurassic Park DVD, somebody posted a one star review and was like, my DVD had a hole in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, or there was another one that was like for a, 
a sexy PhD costume to wear for Halloween, and somebody gave it a one-star review, and they were like, this was not appropriate for my university. So yeah, the point being, you know, the internet's filled with crazies who are also flooding online reviews with their own wacky stuff, too, that you also have to be able to filter out. Uh, yeah. In some way, so you do have to have some process for that. Yeah, because I mean, there's a ton of factors that come into play. Just if you're talking about real reviews or even the inner sprinkling of fake reviews, the thing that people have to realize is that each person has a preconceived notion of the brands and products and services that they're buying based on past experiences. You know, it's just mm -hmm. human nature. I mean, we form some type of judgments which affect our decisions and affect our reviews. So that's why it's always important to do that you know, overall, look at the big picture always. Yeah. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, with myself, which I think is the thing with a lot of people, one of the primary motivations of leaving a review is generally fantastic experience or a generally horrible experience, right? Yeah. You're not yeah. super compelled to leave an online review if you have a middle of the road experience. If you're like, yeah. well, it was okay. You know, this could be better. That could be better. You're probably not compelled to leave a review, but man, when you get burned by a company, you're like, I'm putting that out there. Everybody needs to know, you know, I'm going to tell the world the truth and I'm going to bankrupt that company. Yeah, yeah. Um, one more side thing to talk about, you know, before we wrap up is what do you think? There was this New York Times article about this pizza shop didn't want to get reviews on Yelp, but there's no opt out, right? You yeah, can't opt yeah. out. It's not your choice whether your business gets reviews on Yelp. So they were actually encouraging customers to leave bad reviews. It's like, come in, leave us a bad review on Yelp. We'll give you like 10% discount off your next order or something like that. So they have people talking about how terrible it is and how terrible the food is. And they've like working to kind of sink the system in a way. What do you think about that? Do you think, should you be able to say, I don't want people to leave reviews of my business? I don't want to be a part of this. I guess, yeah, I guess everybody should have a choice. But at the same time, where do you ever draw that line? Because it, it could be really horrible businesses that, you know, Theoretically, you should be able to know as a consumer if it's a bad business, but they've opted out. So I really like the approach they took. You know, they didn't want to be on Yelp. It's clever. Yeah, it was a very clever way to A, make a point, and B, even help their business in the process. Yeah, I mean, obviously they got featured in the New York Times, which I'm sure is a big bump, and, and a lot of people just even like that idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, like people saying that my pizza came out with a dead rat on it and stuff like that. I mean, like you were talking about weird and bizarre reviews that are just so absurd and people laugh at those and then it becomes a thing. And what's kind of odd about it is even if there were some legitimate bad one star reviews of that restaurant, it wouldn't matter because they'd all be in this sea of bad reviews that were fake anyway. Yeah, that sparks the idea of how brands could use reviews in an interesting way. Like if you could have some sort of contest for the best or strangest review, did something like that. Use this feedback or these funny things people do and use that as they have like a branding and marketing tool. I bet you there's some interesting ways you could do that. Or even like, you know, how could you improve our product? Maybe those are the best reviews, you know, because then you're not only are you getting feedback, but then you're getting ways that you can even improve your product or service. You know what I mean? Yeah. I generally like when brands set up some sort of feedback system or websites to submit ideas. I always think that's a good idea to kind of get people involved and feel like they're a part of your company a little bit. Yeah. I think just looking at it as feedback as opposed to a review would even be better. Like, give us feedback. Tell us, you know, something about it. And maybe, again, if you give people incentive, like, maybe we'll pick your feedback and feature it. Maybe you'll get free product or whatever. Yeah. And maybe that's even, you know, they have, like, some site where that's just the, the one question. What could we do better? But you probably get a lot of good information that way. Yeah. Anyway. Again, we're sort of talking about two different things, right? We're talking about... A, the positively paid reviews and how that can affect things. And then also just how people should look at reviews in general, whether they're paid or authentic, right? Yeah. And there's a couple sides to it. There's obviously the brand side and the consumer side. Mm -hmm. And then there are so many forms of online reviews, right? You could have a podcast of reviews. You could have videos where people are talking about things. You have all these different, your Amazons and your Best Buys where there's like star systems. So they, they come in all different forms. You know, they're all over the internet in different ways. 
that's the way things are today. You know what I mean? It's all this disparate information across these different mediums that you could categorize as reviews, but they're about products and about brands and about services, you know, and it's looking at that information. I mean, those are the different sources people have. So it's sometimes hard to wrap your brain around all of that, but we're kind of umbrellaing that all as online reviews in some way. And on that note, let's jump into our top takeaways. So for my final takeaway, I could appeal to all the brands out there with a rallying cry to collectively agree to be honest and authentic when it comes to online reviews. But since it's the American way, or maybe just the human way to try to rig the game, there will always be someone willing to cheat to gain an advantage. And where there's one, there will be others. So instead, let me appeal to all the people out there, the consumers, as the marketing world likes to call them. And the takeaway for consumers is simple. Don't trust the internet, ever. At least not on an individual basis. Instead, use this amazing tool we have to collect and synthesize information on brands and products. When they were reporting on Watergate in the 70s and dealing with a lot of anonymous sources, Washington Post reporters Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein had a rule. They would only print information from anonymous sources if they could verify it with two other sources. The idea was not to get swindled with false information. I invite consumers of online reviews to take the same approach. Check with a number of different sources to help you make your decisions. Skip the one and five star reviews and leaf through the two, threes, and fours. Read, watch, and listen to a few different perspectives. Don't just take any one word for it. That's my takeaway. It's so thorough. I always feel like mine are pretty shallow, very overarching, big picture kind of things. So this one, it's easy. And it's really focused on businesses. Keep doing business as usual. And I say that assuming that you're putting a great product out there, whether it's a physical product or a professional service. Reviews have always been a big part of the buying process. People look to other people for recommendations. Reviews aren't going away. As a matter of fact, they're only going to get more prevalent. So my top takeaway is keep calm and carry on. Business as usual, my friends, as long as you're providing a good experience, your positive reviews will shine through. And if you get a negative review or two, hopefully they're authentic, don't get flustered. The world is a big place and every review is subjective and generally speaking, people will see that your brand rocks. You know, it taps into the key tenant that brands need to understand today, and that is embrace the internet and be authentic. You know, that's what a lot of the old school companies I think have had trouble with. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where online reviews come into it. You can't fight them. They're not going to end. Like you said, they're not going to go away. So you just got to give it the biggest bear hug you can and squeeze the hell out of them. And that's true. I mean, whether they're paid or authentic, because, you know, there are companies out there that pay for negative reviews of other products and services, and we didn't even really get into that. And that's where I say, you know, you have to just stay your course doing business as usual, because if you have a good product or service, nothing's going to change that. That's great advice. It's great advice. And, you know, it's a good point. We didn't even talk about, you know, people posting negative reviews against competitors, which is definitely another thing that happens. And I think we both agree it's definitely well across any sort of a line you could possibly have when it comes to online reviews. Yeah. So uh, it's a big world out there on the Internet. Yeah. It's something you could discuss in detail for a long time. The depths of the Internet. So that's it for today's episode, everyone. You can find current and past episodes of the podcast at speakinghuman.com. You can also listen and subscribe to the Speaking Human podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and Google Play. And some big news, we are now on Twitter. So you can follow us on Twitter and tweet us with your thoughts on today's episode or any topics you'd like us to discuss on the show in the future or any questions or comments. That's at speaking underscore human on Twitter. At speaking underscore human on Twitter. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of Speaking Human. Catch you then, humans. Speaking Human. Was, without a doubt, the worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the internet within minutes, registering my disgust throughout the world. You're the best around.
Nos vemos en la